Hello, everybody. This is Dino Madaloni of the Ask Dino Show. Did you ever just want to sit and talk with someone who has done just about everything in the music business? Someone who talks the talk and actually walks the walk. Well, our guest tonight practically invented the walk. Mega record sales, Grammy Awards, huge concerts, made millions of dollars, so much sex he injured his cover doink, you know what I mean? He endured the depths of heroin addiction back to a full recovery and to this day is still rocking the house. The legendary Chuck Negron is with us tonight in a very special extended version of the Ask Dino Show. He talks rock music history and tells us never heard before things about the legendary band Free Dog Night. If you love rock and roll and its history, you will hear it tonight from someone who lived it. Ask Dino Show coming at you. Bada bang. Welcome to the Ask Dino Show. Hosted by the music biz veteran, Los Angeles record producer of the year, Dino Madaloni. Ladies and gentlemen, Dino Madaloni. Hello, welcome back to the Ask Dino Show. My name is Dino Madaloni. We're coming live from Los Angeles, California. And tonight we have a living legend on this show, Mr. Chuck Negron. Now, Chuck Negron, I've been saying all along, is the blueprint of a rock star. Ooh, what? <laughs> okay. By the magic of television and the great editing of Gordon Michael, we went from Time Warner to my studio just like that. Now, as I was saying, we have a music icon on the show tonight. His name is Chuck Negron. Now, Chuck was formerly in the band Three Dog Night. Now, Three Dog Night had 21 consecutive hit singles. Nobody has that this day. They were so big. They were the biggest band in the world. Led Zeppelin used to open up for them. Insane. Now, back in the day, Chuck made millions by the time he was 30 years old. Then he became a heroin addict. He lost millions, he lost everything. Then he got clean and sober, and now he's out performing in the Chuck Negron band. You are gonna learn so much from this show tonight. We've been waiting for two years to get him on, and just so you know what I'm talking about, check this out. He was the tall, handlebar mustache, skinny one from one of the biggest rock acts of all time, Three Dog Night, along with the soulful Corey Wells and the clean pop voice of Danny Hutton. But it was Chuck that sang the biggest hits for Three Dog Night. And their biggest hit, Joy to the World, with Chuck singing the phrase, Chuck lived the life of a full-blown rock star almost to death. His making it through a 25-year drug addiction is nothing short of a miracle. But he's all good now with great kids and performing with his solo career. Chuck Negron, the ultimate rock and roll survivor. Okay, everybody, Chuck Negron, here he is in person, finally. I want to get signed. Get signed. This is the guy. When I started this show two years ago, I had a, I had a list of names of people that I wanted on this show, and this guy was at the top of the list. I saw a VH1 special on him, and I saw the whole thing that went down. And you know, I've been a musician all my life and been through a lot of things, but nothing compared to what he's been through. Anyway, so Chuck, thanks for coming down. Oh, I man. appreciate it, man. I do. I really do. Okay. After now. I saw Floyd, the, the job you did with Floyd, I had. Oh yeah, Flo Floyd. Floyd Snead's a drummer for Three Dog Night. Fantastic guy. It was our last show. Phenomenal human being. Okay, so Chuck, 50 years. You've been doing mm -hmm. this 50 years. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, that's a, that's just insane. Now. The thing about you is, though, is that 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 most people at a certain time in their life, they, they kind of slow down a little bit. You know, they do a little bit less, and they don't yeah. do as much. But you seem to be ramping it up. You well, I keep having kids. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you know, and uh, I want them all to have a trust, so. <laughs> <laughs> but what I, what, what, besides the kids, which we know that that's our first priority. Good. Besides the kids, uh, what I want to know is, uh, not only, not only do I see you, I've watched your videos, and I want to come and see you live, but you also seem like you're having a ball on your yeah. gigs. It seems well, like you're no, li no, life, life is good, and, and uh, I love doing it. It's all for me. It's all about you know the opportunity of getting better. If you don't work, I, and I'm not dropping names, but uh -huh. this is the truth. A guy stopped in front of me on the way down here, kind of short, and he looked in the mirror, and, and uh, you know I just went, you know, cool. And he yeah. pulled over. He got out of the car. It was John Voigt. Oh. So I go, John, because I, I was friends with his wife. Right. So I was friend, uh, yeah. just friends with his wife. Right. That's <laughs> it. Friends. Nothing more friends. Jen. Anyway, and we we started talking. So he said, you gigging? And I said, I said, I said, yeah, man, you know, uh, I got to keep working. And he went, no, nah, we got to keep getting better. Right. And I said, you're right. That's why. That's why I do it, you know. So that's, so that's what keeps you If you don't you work, right. you don't get better. And for me, I just really want to be good. If you gave a springtime And the promise of the flowers And the feeling that we both share And the love that we could 
anybody out there in the music business uh, or actually needs help with any kind of uh, drug rehabilitation, you should read this thing, okay? Uh, this guy was one of the, I, I always said he had the metabolism of a, of a rhino. I've never seen, I've never, you know, I have family members that have, that have had these, these problems and they did a lot. But I, I, what I read in here, I, I just can't, I can't even believe it. I'm sure you can't either. No, I can't either. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. But anyway, so there's a story in here now. There's a lot of good stories in here, too. And what I want to talk about, I want to go way back, way back, 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 back. Okay, and, and this story struck me because, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you in a second. But anyway, uh, you were a 16-year-old kid, 16, 15, 16, At 17. At one time, yes. Yeah, <laughs> you can remember that. <laughs> and you're, you're in this band, you're the Rondells. Rondells. Yes, and, and you, you're five white dudes, yeah. matching sweaters. And you what did does your, book, what yeah. is, oh yeah, I read this thing. Are you kidding? Yeah. Every night. Yeah, green, uh, green matching sweater. It put me to sleep. No, <laughs> no it, will, it will. So if you have that problem, get it, the book. Anyway, uh, one of your first gigs, uh, they put you in one of the hardest scenarios in the world to perform at uh, was the Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. Yeah. They put you in this den of the Apollo Theater is the hardest place to perform. Yeah. Okay. For us, it was. It was, yeah. it was the black. It's a pretty predominantly black audience. Especially back in that time. Oh yeah, that was uh, the late fifties. Late fifties, all black. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, what I want to know, I want to know about that day because it, it, it was almost like a movie type ending for you guys. It was almost like for, for how it ended up. But can you just run us just a little bit of how what happened that day? It was yeah, it was um, it was a, a life changing day. I learned more in that day than I had in quite in quite a few years. Anyway, going down into the bowels of of, of the Apollo. And, you know, just seeing this subculture of, you know, not performers, but people who hang around performance and provide them with stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, t I saw, you know, people making out, maybe yeah. more than making out, people yeah. getting high, and a lot right. of, right. what are these white kids down here? Right. You know, and, and uh, then, you know, then walking on a board because it was all water, and then, and then uh, the, the woman that was on us, on before was drunk right and like you said yeah. she messed up and they start throwing stuff at right her. and they and they will drag you off the stage they dragged if her you, off if the if stage you, if you don't leave the stage they, they will literally drag her you off, off the stage the stage and then the guy said you kids are up go get them <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like good luck 
I want to jump forward now a little sure. bit, okay? So I want to talk about the Sunset Strip days back in those days, the fun days. You know, yeah. Well, no, 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 let me tell you, it was fun. Yeah. So I, I want to talk because I remember playing. I was I was playing the whiskey in the 73, 72 era. Sure. And I remember on any uh, Joe Cocker would be there, the Beach Boys, everybody, uh, Rod Stewart, Stevie Wonder, they'd be sure. sitting in the in the having drinks and just yeah. hanging out. Yeah. Can you just give us a little vibe of those days, uh, just kind of some of the fun scenarios and what went on and, okay. and, and how yeah. you guys grew and who you watched and all that stuff. Well, 67, right around that time, uh, Danny had had a, a hit record the year before. Rose and Rainbows. Rose and Rainbows. I remember hearing great, about, great record. I think it was Lloyd Thaxon I saw him. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, I saw it. Yeah. He met his girlfriend on that on oh. show. <laughs> one, of, one of the dancers. There's she a story was, behind everything. Oh, there's a story behind everything, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, because of him, we, we got to go into the whiskey. Uh, the cream. Right. Playing the whiskey. The whiskey. The cream. Smokey Robinson playing the, the, the whiskey. So we're talking about a time when music was so eclectic yeah. that you got to see everyone who was anybody in this club. Jimi Hendrix, when we played there, Jimi Hendrix came up in January. Mm. I mean, I remember him being shy and awkward off stage, on stage being like a ballerina. I mean, just, yeah, yeah, the just, way he moved, the way he moved, yeah. Way, and the confidence, and I went, wow. Yeah. This man is a, a, is a real economy, and he was actually shy, right. but on stage. So we got to see everybody. And then, of course, Chicago, yeah. we would flip the coin and see who opened. Chicago, you know, Three Dog Night. We did a show uh, where uh, J um, James Taylor opened, mm. and one show Led Zeppelin was next, then Three Dog Night, and one show Three Dog Night was next, and Led Zeppelin. James Taylor, Three Dog Night, and Led Zeppelin. At the whiskey. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, you're talking insane, you know, ins Just in history, insa history, ins history, insane stuff. History making bands. Yeah, like yeah. And it was uh, Jim Morrison. You know, I remember seeing Jim Morrison before, you know, before we we made it. Watching this man f finding his way into stardom, because he came from a theatrical background mm -hmm. and uh, was trying to find more of a of an identity than become a, a singer. And he right. did theatrics and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Pat, just did all sorts of stuff. And and they were great. There's another story in here. <laughs> Okay. In those days, I want to know, when I read this, I said, I got to ask him about this. I want to know about the tone, you pretty much getting in Janis Joplin's face. I know that she said something against Corey that pissed you off. That didn't piss me off. It, it, it hurt him. And um, and Corey was a family guy. He was about as far from a rock and roll star as you could get. He didn't know who she was. And she flattered him. And she said, I, I never believed that a white man could sing trial a little tennis like that, but you did. And he blew her off. Oh. And she was a star, so she went off on him. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, ja, you know and I just grabbed her shoulder and, I, you know, I said, hi. I said, you want to fight on the guy? <laughs> you know? And she went, you know, but, 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 but you. Yeah. And I said, just leave him, leave him alone, man. Right. You know, so. And uh, they pulled her away, and then we did the Atlantic Pop, Pop Festival. Atlantic City Pop Festival was a week after um, Woodstock, mm -hmm. and she was in the, in the back uh, backstage with everybody. And she's actually at that time with the Grateful Dead talking to them. And when she saw me, she you know she said, "Oh, there's that." <laughs> but the story I want I want to tell you is many years later, we didn't like each other. I didn't you know, it, 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 but many years later. Our producer, who produced Born to be Wild mm -hmm. and Three Dark Nights' first two albums, Gabriel Meckler, they hired him to produce, to bring her, straighten her up and bring her back. Uh -huh. So Gabriel invited me over to his house, and when I came in, I saw this woman with her hair up in a bun, with a, you know, a, whatever they, the women wear when they're washing the dishes. It was Janice washing their dishes. Oh. And she was clean and sober, and I walked in, and she just turned around. It was like a whole other person. And she looked at me, and, I, and you know, I could see if she was taken aback. And I went, hi, it's so good to see you. And she went, oh, cool, cool. Nice to see you, too. So it really was all the, the booze and, right, and, well, it was and all the, the drugs. Right, I mean, right, right, right. another right. nice person trying to make a living in this right, business, right. Okay. and uh, she lost her way, much like I did. So it ended up good. Ended up great. Okay, good. Yeah. 
So Chuck, let's talk about Three Dog Night a little bit, okay? Um, you guys were, were not known for writing your songs. Well, I'll tell you how it started. Okay. The first rehearsals that Three Dog Night had um, really went well, fooling around with other people's songs. The second we brought in original stuff, we were at each other's throats. So I knew, I said, we're in trouble, we're never going to make it. So I called up Chuck Kay, who became the head of Warner Chapel, and, and he represented many, many artists. And I met him when I was on Columbia Records uh, in my early 20s. And I heard one, and I brought it in, and I got, uh, you know, I got the guys to hear it, and thankfully they liked it. And then Danny brought in, "It's for You," right, uh, which was a waltz right. that Ciela Black had done, written by the Beatles. Beatles yeah. And we wow. really went, "Hey, this is very cool. We yeah. can take this tune and really show them yeah. what we do as arrangers and, you who, did. and who we are." You did, because that was a completely and, different. And movie. that worked. Yeah. Yeah. And and. And then chorus and look, I, 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 you know, I do try a little tenderness in my yeah. show. Yeah. So we went in and recorded, and then the producer just went, "We got to do this." We were a little leery because, you know, I mean, Otis Redding, you know, pretty hard guy, but Corey did it. So you know, Eli's coming, and I knew Corey was gonna kill it. Uh, easy, easy right. to be hard, you know, was uh, with a smash. We found this writer, yeah. uh, Elton John, and recorded the first song. Uh, Lady Samantha, no one had recorded him. And, and we found some great writers, and because we had a hit album, we went in and the band, we'd give the band a song, we'd sit down, work out the keys and stuff, and then we'd leave and they'd do it. What we brought to the table, we gave songs that were already out, already dead. I mean, they'd had their time. Oh, I see. They all, they, all and some of them had, like Randy Newman's album, it was out, he was on his second album. Now, take Leo Sayer, for example. Leo Sayer's song, was the show won't go on, mm -hmm. not the show must go on. Mm -hmm. It was the show won't go on, and I changed the I changed the lyric because that wasn't our story. Right. right. Our story was the, the show, show went on. <laughs> if you had limbs falling off, yeah, I, I read that. The, the show the show yeah. went on. You know? Yeah. So I I changed. I took a song that that had been out was number one in in London, but came out here and dropped. And I took a song. I changed the lyrics. I changed some of the message, and became an, you know, it became an, a number, number one song. So we changed a lot of stuff. Paul Williams. Paul Williams was part of a writing team, uh, Jack Conrad and Paul Williams, right. and they didn't want Paul to write by himself. So when he when he called me and said, "Look, I have this song, but they're not going to play it for anyone. They don't even want it," uh, I said, "Let me hear it." And it was an old-fashioned love song. I said, "I'll do that." And so I broke Paul Williams away from being just part of a writing team. And they saw him in a whole nother light. He started writing by himself. He started writing with everybody. And of course, won an Academy Award, Grammys, uh, he's, won, he's won everything. So we were responsible. But the thing was, he, uh, I heard the song and I thought it was great. And, and we did a better version than anyone's ever done of that song. Right, right. So there was, you know, there was a lot of, of, uh, of give and take. And the shame of it, the Three Dog Night in a sense has been knocked because we didn't write one. But actually, we took people's songs that hadn't made it and made them better. Right. And, uh, and I mean, I ran into Randy Newman. I'd never met him before. About two years ago, in, in we were online, the big guy. Yeah. Uh, online in the airport, I said, hi, Randy, I'm Chuck Nagel, and his wife just pushed on. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> the, the wife, and I went, oh, that's so sweet. She is not. Thank you so much. I don't know what it is. Somebody <laughs> shut that note. <laughs> see him live again. I just have to see him, man. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't leave <laughs> the fist hanging, man. You gotta have the only me hanging. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what? It's time for the Ask Dino Show Tip of the Day. It's all about music tips that you can live in your career by, okay? Check it out. Ask Dino Show Tip of the Day. Tip of the day. Okay. Wait a minute. Normally, this is the segment where I give a music biz tip of the day. 
but we let the cameras roll on Chuck and captured something very cool and quite ironic. Remember, this was supposed to be a break in filming. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? It's time for the Ask the Ono Show tip of the day. It's all about music tips that you've been living your career by. Okay, check it out. Ask the Ono Show tip of the day. Check it out. Okay. Two seconds here. Who does the tip of the day? I do. Oh, you do? The tip do. What's yeah. the tip? You gonna make it? Uh, this one. This one might be about band fights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Park your ego at the door. I think I'm gonna do one about band fights. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know the correlation. <laughs> okay. Actually, Danny and Corey fought. They actually. I know. I know. I, I, I got one fight with Corey protecting Danny. Actually. Dino's tip of the day. Hey everybody, this is Dino Mataloni, the Asking the Show. Anyway, I'm here with my new friend, <laughs> Shana Tenuta. Now, we're talking about a brand new segment called In the Biz. Now, this, this segment was invented by you. You guys out there in Facebook, Facebook land and all social media, you are coming out all the time with your products, your services, your events, your release parties, uh, fashion shows, uh, uh, concerts. All these things, I look on Facebook, I'm, I swear, every day I see thousands of, of these things. So what we did, we went out and found the right person for this job, and we found the perfect person for the job. Uh, she is a professional promoter, uh, she also worked for Playboy Live, and she was a model, and she was born into the, she was pedigreed into the music business by her mother, who does a rock and roll radio show, and the name of that is... Always hard always, on rock radio. Always hard. <laughs> I love it. Yes. How can you go wrong with that? Shana Tenuta, welcome to the Ask the Show family. Thank you so much. Now, what can we expect when these people write things to us and they want us to promote their stuff and talk about it? What can we expect from this segment with you? Well, considering you just mentioned everything that I'm going to be doing, <laughs> um, it is. It's CD releases, any album covers, any new thing like that, magazines, um, fashion shows. Right. Kind of all the above. This is Ask Dino Show. My name is Dino Madaloni, Shana Tenuta. In the biz, watch for it. I am back. This is Chuck Negron, formerly of Three Dog Night, and you probably remember the wonderful hits we have. Well, I'm here visiting with the Ask Dino Show. So you guys come back. Please, please, I'm begging you. I need the work. Dino. Ooh, Dino. Dino. Yeah, I just hope there's no surprises. <laughs> no, there's no surprises. We're not going to go there. <laughs> Good! We're not going to talk about injuries or anything no, like I'm that. No, I was thinking about children. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, all right. Now, but it actually, it actually is serious, okay? So I'm going to read these names to you, okay? Elvis, Michael Jackson, Kurt Cobain, Janis Joplin, River Phoenix, John Belushi, Whitney Houston, Lenny Bruce, John Entwistle, Jimi Hendrix. You know where I'm going with this, right? Oh, yeah. Shannon Hoon. Heath Ledger, Keith Moon, Sage Stallone, just recent, is like, uh, you know, we don't know for sure yet, but what it was looking like, you know. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah. looks that way. Yeah, anyway, but by the grace of God, your name is not on this list. Wow. Yeah, yeah. anyway, People so. People took bets I'd be on that list. What is it about the, uh, this syndrome of the artist that, you know, starts with this, starts with that, and then moves to that, and there's a reason for this and a reason for that, and all of a sudden they can't do a show without it, and pretty soon they're, they're dead. Well, I think, speaking about our artists, I mean, the fact that you know about is because they're successful or they're artists or they're, their family is successful, so they're, they're in the news. But uh, the majority of alcoholics and addicts die in anonymity. Uh, in the rooms and, and the people that find recovery is 5% is, is five, 5 of everyone that's out there. Right. But the the good news and the bad news is that people get to hear that there are uh, very successful, very talented people that haven't found enough in their God-given gifts and, and experiment with drugs. And what people don't know and what they should 
you know, what they should teach in the schools is there is a difference between normal people and people that suffer from addiction. Mm -hmm. when, when a normal person has a drink, they have a drink and they put it down. When an alcoholic has a drink, it goes biff, bam, boom, hi, I'm shut. <laughs> uh, I, it, I there, know that there's feeling. There's a difference. There's yeah. a difference. Yeah. So some don't get to walk, walk away surely because they are predisposed to addiction. Others party too long, stay at the fair too long and die. Now call Kurt, Kurt Cobain. Uh, I got a call from uh, the Musician's Assistance Program. Uh, I want you to go and see this artist. He's in this hospital, very right. well known right, right. Uh, recovery. Right. And uh, on my way down there, uh, he calls me. He said, the, the guy's uh, was got a little too nervous about meeting you and he really feels he's very depressed and feels less than he told me he only knows a couple of chords and you know i mean that kind of you know insecurity so i said you know, let me come he said you know what pretty high profile i know who it was pretty high profile yeah. yeah. guy let's leave him uh, alone i said fine call me back two days later I'm, i turn on the news and kill, uh, kurt Cobain killed himself and i help a lot of people uh behind the scenes i don't talk i don't talk about them. I do talk about the people that passed. Uh, Rick James. I went to see Rick James. I remember Rick James saying to me, at least I'm not as bad as you are. Mm. Mm. And I went, Rick, you, you can't even breathe. And yeah. he said, no, but I still got my house. And, and I said, man, you're dying. Yeah. And his roommate called me two weeks later and he died. And, and that was me. You, I saw you on Bill O'Reilly's show. And uh, and one of, the, one of the questions he was asking you, and, I only saw like a few minutes of it, but he said, you mentioned something about a good rehab and a bad rehab. What is the difference between a good rehab and a bad rehab? Well, my experience is a, uh, uh, for a celebrity, um, and, and not for any, but, but especially for a celebrity. There are very many plush places that help these kids and adults through with you know masseuses and swimming and, and and great chefs and some of these people need that because they're so far from the norm if they went into a place like i wanted to cry help they wouldn't make it two days because they had a cry help has a contract with the prisons you know had a contract with uh, people with hiv you know i mean so these places do serve a purpose for people who would never mingle with those people but they're also enabled and, right. and, right. and if you're a real addict or alcoholic, you really know how to use that system. Mm -hmm. So what, the, the difference between a, a good rehab and, and a bad rehab is the one that the good rehab treats, teach, treats everyone it, the same way. Right. There are no special favors. Uh, there are no celebrities. I was, I was once in a room with, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget his name so I, I can't tell his story. Um, one of the great football players for uh, the Oakland Raiders. Uh, Matuzak? John Matuzak? John Matuzak. Okay. My roommate had me sing to him, and I sang. Uh -huh. Sing one! Okay! <laughs> yeah, with, that, with the size of that guy, you're not going to say Don't no. Don't look at my girlfriend. <laughs> I got, I'm not looking at her. I'm telling you, man. I'm sitting, I'm scared. Don't look at my girlfriend. <laughs> I'm not looking. He was huge, man. Oh, was, yeah, 275 pounds. Yeah, 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 muscle. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they'd come in and give him his meds, and he'd call and go, hey, why are you bringing my meds in? And he'd look at me. And I, but my, they bring him in a home with him. Because he was scared, you know. And he went out every night and went across the street to the Hard Rock and drank, and he died. Especially people who care about strangers, who care about evil and social injustice. Do you only care about the bleeding crowd? How about a meeting friend? I need a friend. How can people be so heartless? You know I'm hung up on you. I, must, I, I gotta talk about this now, okay? And, and I, I hope you don't mind. I, no. I don't want to embarrass you or anything. Um, I am I'm, not a hundred. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer in chemistry. You know, I'm, and always uh, uh, anything that's great 
uh, is to do with chemistry. Yes. And if you replace one piece of that, the chemistry's gone. This is what I think. It's the truth. It's the truth. And and you guys, you guys had all seven of you together were yes. a piece of the puzzle. Okay, when Joe Sherman's passed on, and so we know that he's not with us anymore. Yeah, we can't have yeah, that yeah. again. But what I want to know is, what can we do? What can the fans do? I know that there's, you know, I, I read it in the book, and it's, 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 it's well publicized, so I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything out of, you know, school here. I, well publicized of the fact that we got two dogs over here and one dog over here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, 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 and I'm talking to you as a fan now. No, no, okay? we're, no. I'm, I'm no, not no. talking as a record Trust producer. Trust me, I'm a fan. Yeah, okay. Then you, then, then, then you know what I mean. And you're on stage. <clears throat> I've talked to a lot of, uh, 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 since getting preparing for this, uh, a lot of Three Dog Night fans, and the first thing they say, where's Chuck, where's Chuck? Every, every video I see of them singing by it without you is, where's Chuck, where's Chuck? I'm not saying it's your fault, I'm not saying it's their fault, okay? No, we as fans, yeah. we as fans don't really care. Yeah. You know what uh, I mean? I, yeah. You know, I mean, we really don't care. Uh, I mean, w we we know that there's problems and there's been problems and whatever it is, and God knows, I'm sure it's been some severe stuff. But I think, oh. and this is what I think, aside of, aside of hurting another person's child, I think anything can be forgiven, even if it has to do with millions of dollars, yeah. okay? And, you know, I, I, I don't know if uh, Corey and Danny are going to watch this, but this I'm talking to you guys, too. It's got nothing to do with the fact, other than the fact that the fans want to see their three dogs, their six dogs, they want to see them together. We don't want to see two dogs in a symphony and, and two dogs and some other guy. Uh, you know, we want to see all of that. So this is my thought on this, okay? Now, this is just a thought and a wish of a fan, not a, 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 a business mogul or, or a promoter or anything, just the fans. I'm speaking a mogul? A mogul, a mogul, a mogul. Such, mogul. such a mogul. I'm speaking, I'm speaking with the fans that I've talked to, okay. Is there anything we can do as fans? Okay, let me tell you, there, 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 is, a, there is a misconception that this is about something that needs to be forgiven or some deeds or something to do in the past that has nothing to do with any okay. of, of our history. It's okay. long, it's, it's long gone. And uh, this has to do with, with the way Danny Hutton sees business. Mm -hmm. He does not want to take the, take the chance that if Three Dog Night does a tour, it's not successful, and he's ending up making less money because Chuck Negron's a part of it, and then Chuck Negron leaves and goes on, and his his, his solo career is enhanced. That's his thing. That's his. Thing. That's the. That's, the that's his thinking. Now, I offered them as recently because when we got back together in the '80s, the package that went out there and did really well was Three Dog Night opening for the Beach Boys, and we did big venues. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I heard that Brian was going back, I contacted, I contacted Danny and Corey. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny didn't call me back. I spoke uh, to uh, his manager and his accountant, and I said, "This is the deal. Offer three, uh, offer Brian, who loves Three Dog Night. He was our first producer, right? To open up for the Beach Boys. This will be the biggest tour of the year." Who has the biggest record on the classic acts right now? Beach Boys. Beach Boys. Three Dog Night would have been there. I offered them, I offered them to come in. I didn't have to be a partner. Just to come in. This is going to be our last opportunity. This is, this is a gift given to us with Floyd and before anyone else passes away. And the only one con that contacted me back was their, uh, their accountant. And he said, it's not going to happen. Danny won't let it happen. And I, I, I'm, be, you know, I'm, it's not nice for me to say this, but this is what ha this is what happened in business. Danny Hutton forms a band called Three Dog Night. He's the leader of the band. Within a year, he is the third wheel. By the end of the band, he's irrelevant musically to the record company, not to us. Yeah. To us, he's as important as he ever was. Uh, absolutely. But to the business community, he is irrelevant. Uh, irrelevant. We don't do the Johnny Carson show because Johnny doesn't even want them to talk. That he wants to interview me because he's the only face, face. I'm the only face he's seen on TV. Not that I'm better than them. He's the only one. I'm the only one he knows. Right. So, 
we turn all these shows down. It goes on and on and on. Danny Hutton is not going to take the chance to be the third wheel again because he's running the show now. If I come back, Danny becomes a background singer to him, singing two songs a night. And what I have heard from insiders, he is not going to let that happen to something he runs. And it's not about money or business. He, he's not going to take the chance of what happened to him. It, it broke him. Mm -hmm. It broke him. Mm -hmm. He started a band, became the biggest band in the world, and he became irrelevant. So that's what it's about. Okay. Well, I, I... So it's not on me. I offered them this I, tour. I, 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 I read about this. I read and about this. and the shame of it is, Dan, I called Danny's home. And I spoke to his wife. And no one knows this. I spoke to his wife. And he said, oh, Danny's right here. And then she said, oh, oh, he's not. And he was just waving, you know. Yeah. And I said, please, I have a great idea. I'm friends with his wife. Always have been. Yeah. Um, please have him contact me this is this is a chance that has been handed to us and no one knows this no no one knows this i mean i'm sharing this sharing this here i mean this uh, this would have happened if danny's fears of becoming a third wheel and the reason for that is him and corey travel separately mm. Mm. see i could come in and take sides mm. and he's i wouldn't because i was yeah. always the guy in the middle stopping them from fighting so they travel separately they don't talk to one another, and if I come in, Danny could lose all control. Um, I'm just interested in what you're saying. Yeah. Do the tour, sing the songs, give the fans what they want. And you know, as much as the fan, give Floyd Sneed what, oh, yeah. what he deserves. Because oh, yeah. of all of us, he's the only one not making the kind of living that we are. And right. it's, not, it's wrong. Right. It's wrong. Right. Well, what I have to say about that is, is that... Again, um, that's crazy to me. <laughs> it's just freaking crazy to me. You know, uh, now, if you guys were 30, 40. No, no, I think 50, it's crazy too. And, 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 and I'm talking to Danny now. Yeah. Uh, if you guys were 30, 40. Crazy. <laughs> that's going to help a lot. <laughs> I'm just saying this, Danny and Corey. I got him on my, on my show. If you guys want to come here, because there's, there's always. It's not two sides, there's three sides. There's one side, the other side. And then the there's truth. the truth. If you guys want to come on the show, I'll be glad to talk to you. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not Jerry Springer in it here. Okay, yeah. I'm not doing Come it. on, you I, give I, it, let's I, have yeah. your side. Yeah, come on. Now, here's the deal though. I mean, just the reality of this is this. The reality of it is this, is that, is that the people that are losing now, First of all, no one's gonna say that about Danny Hutt. No one. No one's gonna say, you know, Danny, uh, you know, Chuck this and Corey that, and so you're the third wheel. I see just as much respect when I see that show. He's still singing his ass off. I, so I is he, he's better than he was. Yeah, I see that. I watch the videos. He's I see. Better than he was. But see, it's, what, what I'm saying is this. This is my point. People are dying. People, the baby <laughs> boomer, the baby boomers are dropping. I got an hour left for God's <laughs> sake. The baby boomers are dropping. Okay. And, and why not just, just okay, Danny, you don't want to lose control. Then say, okay, here's the deal. We're going to do a six-month tour. That's it, okay? We do six months. We go out six months. We do it, make the money. The fans are happy. It'll be a phenomenal. I mean, I mean, look, there's been nothing but all the musicians I know, every player I've ever met, the musicians now, not, the, not just people, the musicians, have always had nothing but respect for Three Dog Night. I've never heard one bad word about Three Dog Night. Not one. Even with Chuck's, all Chuck's drug stuff and all that, never heard one bad thing about the music. Okay? Never, not one bad thing. So why not go out and do five months, four months, three months? Go out, play the, the major venues. Go out with the Beach Boys, whatever. Go do some TV shows. Let me, when I'm watching Letterman, let me see you guys get up there. Brian did O'Reilly. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, here's the deal. You really got to think about this, okay? Because of the fact that the clock is ticking, okay? You're at the age now, and I, I, I'm not saying this because he's you know, the youngest. I, I, Danny's youngest. I'm not. I'm not a spring chicken either. But the deal is this: forget it, dude. Just go out and play for the fans. Let them see these guys. On, let them, let's see the musical history. We're losing our musical history all the time. We're losing our musical history. They're dying. You know, Donna Summers, uh, uh, Whitney yeah. Houston, Michael Jackson. 
these people are dying, and we want to see our musical history. Uh, the and baby boomers want to see it. It's the harmony that never will be reproduced no. unless the three of us get together. It's the harmony and the chemistry. It's the that fact chemistry. that you guys were three pieces. I watched the videos, and it's like, it brings me back to the day when it was all that much fun. And, and as a matter of fact, what I want to do is this. I want to go to a video now. I want you guys, to, the, the, the audience that's watching us, I want you to see what I'm talking about, OK? This is Three Dog Night back in the day. Check this out. What's new with you? What's going on? Where can we see you? What, any concerts coming up? Uh, any shows? Anything happening that we'd like, to, we'd like to know about what's going on? I'm working on a screenplay, Three Dog yeah, right. Nightmare, which I'm hoping uh, comes through. I'm finishing up uh, short stories, 10 short stories by, by Chuck Negron. And one of the stories that I'm, I'm writing uh, is Rock and Roll, a contact sport. I'm going to explain of all the things that happened to me while I was playing bad ball and in the Bronx, being stabbed, being hit with a baseball bat, all those things were well, nothing compared to what happened to my face and body in rock and roll. And it's, right. you know, it's a cautionary tale. And I'm going to use that, that thing because I have, I have all over my place. Anyway, um, I have no idea what I'm talking about because I totally got lost. <laughs> so I smile. Okay, there you go. <laughs> They're just we're talking about what you're doing, what's going to be. Oh, yes, I'm glad this. Yes. <laughs> trying to finish uh, this album, The Soul That Nurtured Me, which is starts from the 50s within the still of the night and I, with contemporary arrangements. But I do, I do not stray too far. Uh, and up until uh, right. some of the songs of the of the 60s. Like the, Rod Stewart did. Or, yeah, know, but, but, but I'm not a one trick pony. Yeah. I can sing so many different. Style, so it's not going to be just one sound. Right. Each song is going to okay. sound like someone else doing it. Okay. You know, I'm busy. I'm very blessed. Good, good. That's great. Okay, so now at the end of the show here, I always ask uh, advice. Just any advice on okay. on the music business, like if you were talking to your, your own child. Okay. You know, I think a, a very a very important thing about success and one of the gifts, one of the blessings uh, from whatever higher power you have is resilience. Resilience is a wonderful thing to jump back after each, each failure. I think another thing that's very important is to support yourself, is not to become a burden. Uh, I lived in my ca car, worked at the May Company in retail uh, uh, until I, so I could feed myself. I didn't become a burden to my family. I went to college so I, so I could learn more about music, but also learn an another pr profession. What I would do is say your music is number one, but you have to set time aside for it and make it the most precious time of your day. But earn your way. You don't get to sleep on your couch all day like you're a rock star. Mm. Get up, go to work. Make that hour a day, two hours of writing. You know, do, learn your trade because there's a reason people are successful. They're resilient and they learn what they're doing. All right, Chuck. I can't thank you enough, brother. I really thank you. you. It's been fantastic. <laughs> Chuck Negron, everybody. <laughs> now listen, 50 years a legend, 50 years of rock and roll legend. So and I'm barely you. 40. <laughs> okay, announcements. First, I want to say that was a great show. We had a great time. Fantastic. Thanks to Chuck Negron. Now, I'm going to be directing a new film on Rich Hardesty. It's called An American Musician. Now, Rich had an independent career for 20 years. It's going to be all about his playing, traveling the world, all the things he's been through. It's going to be a fantastic movie, okay? Also coming up, I'm going to be uh, composing the music for a new film about Bruce Lee. It's called Bruce the Challenge, okay? It's going to be fantastic. We're going to, I'm going to be doing the music and all the post-production. Also want to mention a great new hip-hop radio station. It's called Hip Hop National Radio. And you can contact them at 877-580-8555. 877-580-8555. Talk to Poetic or Lady Die about your music, any questions, things like that. Now, coming up on the show, we've got Buzzy Martin. Now, Buzzy Martin wrote this book called Don't Shoot, I'm the Guitar Man. Now, what Buzzy did, he went into San Quentin Prison 
Now, he wasn't a criminal. He didn't get, he didn't get the, a sentence there. He just went in there and taught these guys, the, the inmates, for three years, he taught them guitar. Now, they're making a movie about it right now, and Eric Roberts is going to play him in the film. Also coming up on the show, we got Prescott Niles. Prescott Niles was in the band The Nap. Remember the song, My Sharona? Anyway, Prescott Niles was the bass player in that band, and also he is teaching songwriting. He's got a lot to say. He's still out there playing. He's playing, actually he's playing with Missing Persons with Dale Bozio, and maybe we can get Dale to come on the show too. Okay, I want to thank David McNeil, our producer, Gordon Michael, our editor and director, our celebrity chocolatier, Don Campbell, Steve at Music Scene Magazine, our artist, Jeff Mataloni, Tony Farrell, our head of security, and our production assistants, Cecily Callen, Brandon McNeil, Luke Denny, and our all new In The Biz Girl, Shauna Tenuta. We love when you watch, we love when you watch, we love when you watch. This is Dino Mataloni, The Ask Dino Show, and thank you for watching. Oh, oh, oh. Hey everybody, look, it's Don Tamil, the celebrity chocolatier. Oh my god! She, she, lo she loves Chuck's music so much that she brought down this fantastic chocolate. I mean, look at it, it's all custom made here with his name and everything. Look at that, Ask Neil Show, Chuck Negron. Very impressive. Very impressive. Don, where can we get some of this? Well, first of all, I want to say one thing. Come on, give us our dogs. Give us our dogs. <laughs> And secondly, I want to say um, welcome to the Ask Dino Show and how happy I am and we are that we're all in the same place finally. That's really awesome. Yeah. And I've been uh, watching your videos too. And I'm I, sorry. I picked a special little gift for you for oh, yeah. so I feel like I'm 50. Oh! <laughs> oh. This is Nifty at 50. And you guys love your songs. We've been listening yeah. to them for years and years and years. Any and young girls out there 50? And I want to dance, Chuck. <laughs> This on. is nice, okay, and we can, can, I can dance. We saw. Okay, so you can get this at A. Klein Chocolatier in Claremont, or you can go to Oak Glen and go to uh, Village Candy Kitchen, or you can go to acline.com. That's A-K-L-I-N-E.com. Don't eat all this, it's coma time. <laughs> okay, now Chuck, I have a friend that is a good friend of yours, a good friend of mine, and he told me to ask you a question. I'll help you with this if you need okay. help, but he thinks you'll know. He wanted to know who is the best looking guy at Gold's Gym. Rick Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Chuck Negron, and I am nude. From the waist down. <laughs> it's really hot in here, it's the only way to fly. That's how I roll, baby. We're at the Astino show, he's nude too. Thank you. <laughs> you said spicy. Uh, you guys with the Crazy. <laughs> That's gonna help a lot. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Especially people who care about strangers, who care about evil and social injustice.